Good morning, this is Tim McGowan for the Finance News Network. US equities were lower in Thursday trading, though finished off their worst levels as the S&P 500 closed just above the key 3900 level. Overnight, the Nasdaq shed 1.43%, while the S&P 500 shed just over 1%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average outperformed, but still dropped just over half a percent. Shares of Adobe weighed on the Nasdaq and S&P 500. The software stock lost more than 16% after the company announced a $20 billion deal to buy Figma. The weakness spread to other tech stocks, with Apple falling 1.9% and Salesforce sliding 3.4%. Bank stocks, however, were a bright spot, with Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan rising more than 1% apiece. A mixed batch of economic reports on Thursday did little to bolster investor confidence. Initial jobless claims came in better than expected, but import prices saw a smaller drop than estimates suggested. Retail sales beat expectations, but were negative when excluding cars. Manufacturing data also showed a slowing economy. The big headline today that was the threatened US rail strike has been averted after the White House and unions reached a tentative deal this morning. Of note, uranium funds have soared amid growing interest in nuclear power. Uranium funds have surged more than their summer lows as the global energy crisis receives interest in nuclear power. Note that the $1.8 billion Global X uranium ETF has rallied by about 30%, while the $1 billion Sprott uranium mined ETF was also up around 43% from the July 6 lows. Across the sectors overnight, energy weakened again as oil pulled back. And semis, media, entertainment, IT, precious metals, freight and logistics were some of the underperformers, while banks, hospitals, pharma, home builders fared better. Managed care was a standout. So the real question is, is the market cheap or expensive? The market became 20% cheaper during this year's sell-off, with the market PE moving from 22 to 18. Valuations now are right back to where they were in late 2019. However, the environment was vastly different then. CPI inflation was around 2%, now it's around 8%. Ten-year rates were 2%, not today's 3.5%. All these contrasts should argue for a lower market multiple today than in 2019. Inflation, with its accompanying volatility and uncertainty, should compress multi multiples. Historically, when inflation is measured by the Consumer Price Index is above 5%, the S&P 500 has traded around 12 times the earnings it generated over the prior year. However, markets don't go down because they are expensive and they don't rise because they are cheap. But long-term returns and valuations are firmly linked from that point of view. The current market is therefore not particularly appealing. However, given the DNA of the market, the market's belief deep down has not changed. The Fed will always fold on interest rates, the market only goes up, and the tech industry will always lead the market. There are only three things that drive markets, positioning, policy and profits. For the time being, the old market adage rings true, don't fight the Fed. On the currency front, the one Australian dollar has weakened compared to the US dollar, buying 60, just over 67 US cents. On commodity fronts, Iron ore futures are pointing to a 0.8% fall. Gold dropped to its lowest level since April 2020 on Thursday, hurt by elevated US Treasury yields and a firm dollar. Gold lost about 1.9%. Silver was down 1.5% and copper dropped 0.8%. Oil lost 3.8%. On the futures today, the SPY futures are pointing to a 0.7% fall. This is Tim McGowan for Finance News Network. Have a good day.